אוקיי, יופי. אגב, אני לא רוצה שיראו לך את כל הוואטסאפ. איפה ה... זה בדסטאפ? לא יודעת. אוקיי, אז אני אקרא מה היא כתבה לי. כתבה לי משהו אחד. אני חושב שאת מחוברת לשם שומעים אותנו.
Thank you so much for the opportunity to have the year with you. Sorry, what is it? Two more. Here I have more. Um, so first of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to see you year round, not just for one time. And I hope, my pleasure. Um, So I will apologize just one more time about my English and you will, you will do your best to understand me and I will do my best to have as good as mistake as I can. Um, okay, so I think that we right away dig into our parsha. Uh, we're starting Parashat uh, Lech Lecha. We started the book of Bereshit, um, the beginning of the word, not just our nation. Soon we'll get to specifically what's going on. Beta Cheshul, so we're really starting with the beginning of the word. And as much as we want to claim Abraham to ourselves, we also need to know that Abraham is Avamun Goim, meaning lots of nations came out of Abraham. So basically from that perspective, we are still in the beginning of the world. What's going on, how are we starting the humanity? And today, Parashat Lech Lecha is actually a very challenged Parsha because there is so many topics for that Parsha. For the one that are familiar with, or whatever I will say, you know, and the one that are not familiar with, I like I will just say the topics like very briefly. We're starting with our first Ole, Avraham, when Hashem sang to Avraham, Lech Lecha Avraham, and this will be what we will uh, try to understand better today. We're having uh, Sarah in the house of Pharaoh. Sarah was considered as a very beautiful woman. There is a, fe uh, a famine. Khan, famine yeah. is the right word. There is a famine in Canaan, and therefore they decided to go to Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Abraham is afraid that Paul will want to take Sarah for himself, and then he will kill Abraham and claim her as his wife. Therefore, he's saying to Sarah, uh, um, say that you are my sister. Actually, I wanted to discuss about this topic and then decided to change because I had a, I had a better question. So I decided to speak about something else. So this is a very interesting topic. We're having the first world war. We're having five kings fighting against other four kings, the first world war. We're having the promise on the land of Israel, which is also a very high and hot topic in our days. And uh, we're having the first fight in the family between Abraham and Lot. We had Cain and Heaven fighting, but here we're having um, another fight in the family, and we really can learn how to fight wisely. I'll just give you like the, the, the tip of this story because it's important for our life. In the end, we decided that to decide to agree to disagree and each going to a separate way. So this is also a way to, to find a solution to a problem, to decide not to, to disagree. And this is also fine. We're having a garden in Shemael, when Abraham see that um, his wife is uh, he cannot have children, he decided to get another wife. And Ishmael is born. We have in the covenant, the first time that Hashem saying to Abraham, I'm choosing you, I'm, I'm choosing your descendants to come. You are the person that's going to spread the word of me. So we having also this. And we having in the very end of the Parsha, the promising that Yitzhak will be born. So this Parsha is really full with topics um and i decided actually to speak today about something that are more general the first question that i want to try to answer today is why abraham what's so special about abraham we said that he's abamon going why hashem chose him what's so special about him and the second question that we'll try to answer is why Knan? why hashem decided to bring us to Eretz israel if you travel the world, I guess you some of you did, there is beautiful places out of Israel, like with waterfalls and big mountains. And, and so what, what there is in this country that let's face it, it's not the easiest place to live. What's so special about this land that Hashem decided this is the land? So this is the two questions that we'll try to answer today. And of course, we'll try to see what is the moral and what we can take to our everyday life. So before I will start to read the psukim, um, you will see that today in the source sheet there is a rabbi that his name is uh, Rabbi David Hoffman, 
Um, I just want to say a few words about him because I, I guess that you're less familiar with him. So every time that we'll bring like a new Mefaresh, I just will give you a, a brief uh, a biography about this person because we all know Rashi, we all know Ramban, we have like the known one. And this is one that actually have lots of commentaries, but I don't know how much you are uh, familiar with this guy. So we're speaking about the late 19th century, okay? He was, um, um, and he was, if you heard the name Harashar Hirsch, you heard that name? So he was, uh, he, he basically worked with him and um, they have, in, in that time, there was different movements in Judaism. What happened is because of uh, enlightenment and later on moving to the cities and more and more Jews are starting to be part of the society and going out of the shtetls and, and, and the villages that everybody are Jews, there was really debate in the Jewish world what is the right way to combine between Torah and the secular world. And as you, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that most of you know that there was a string that's saying, HaChadash Asur Min Torah, meaning everything that is new is forbidden, which is more like the ultra-Orthodox, we call it. We're having Torah in Derech Eretz, which means we try to combine, we want to do a, a combination. We want to make sure that the secular world going into the Torah world without damaging or without hurting the values which we believe, as, and this will be the modern orthodox, we have in the conservative that was very similar to the modern orthodox, but with a few changes, and we have in the reforms that they said we need to think about all the Judaism issue um, from a different perspective. Now, um, uh, Rabbi David Zvi Hoffman was, belongs to the part of modern orthodox. He was, um, he... He believed in Torah, in Derech Eretz, like to try to find the right combination, how we put in the secular word in the Torah world without damaging it. Yes. And he, sorry. Yeah, and he is actually, uh, was, and he, and he was, um, and he was um, teaching in a Bet Midrash Le Rabbanim Be Berlin. And he was part of their uh, teaching program, and he learned there. And their, their, um, I would say, their goal of that uh, school was to minimize the gaps between what the the science bring us to the Torah world. That was their goal to show that there is basically there is no stigma, there is no conflict. It can be both. That was their idea. And um, he wrote a fascinating article. Uh, if you want, I can give you the whole thing. I will try to send it to you about why Hashem chose Abraham. Um, so we will we will see that I, I, I put him here a few times and we'll try to see. Um, so I wanted to give you this uh, short explanation. Who is this guy? Okay, let's start. So why is Abraham? So we know that if I'm choosing someone very, very, very important to lead humanity, to spread Hashem word, I would, I'm sorry, I didn't, okay, sorry. Um, okay. I would expect that Hashem will tell me something about his characteristic, right? How do I, why I have those expectations? Because if we look at those number one, when Hashem chose Noah to, um, to, to be the last survivor and basically to continue humanity from him, it's telling me, So meaning Hashem telling me the Torah tell me why we choose Noah, why we choose him, because he was tzaddik, tamim, in his generation, I'm not going into, this is, was the last week, Parsha, what is tzaddik, what does that mean, I'm not going into it, but the idea is that Hashem telling me why he chose him, he had the right characteristic, he had the right values, and this is why Hashem chose him. Now, if I'm thinking about Avraham as a person that's supposed to lead us, and Avamon Goim, as we said, lots of nations will come out of that guy, I would, I would expect from the Torah to tell me something about him. But if I'm starting to read, and this is still in the end uh, of Pashat Noach, if you look at those number two, it says as follows. I put the English translation always so you can decide where you want to go. And we're having like the whole generations. And then, we having Vayamat Haran al Kitar Habib Beret Murdato Bukasvim, Vaika Havram and Nahor and Nashim, Shemeshit Avram Sarai, Vishemeshit Nahor Malka, but Haran Abim Ilka, Vi Iska. 
ותהי שרה עקרה, אין לה ולד, ויקח תרח את אברהם בנו, ואת לוט בן הרן בן בנו, ואת שרי קלטו אשת אברהם בנו, ויצאו איתה מאור כסדים ללכת ארצה כנען, ויבואו עד חרן וישבו שם. What do I know about Abraham? The first time that I'm being introduced to this great person. We having שלושה אבות, Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. What do I know about him? I know the name of his father. I know the name of his uncles. I know who was his wife. I know the name of his nephew. Exactly. Which, it's a bit odd, agree with me, that if this is, this is the guy that Hashem chose to spread his name in the world, How can it be that the Torah not telling us a word about who he is? Now, by the way, it's not just about Noach. If you continue, even Yaakov, for example, it says, Ishtam Yoshevo, I have something about him. Moshe, the Torah telling us that he was Bechol Beiti Neem. Hashem telling us something about his characteristic and with Abraham, nothing. And this is a question, why it happened? So, adding to to that question and I'm putting this question here we will answer it later on okay so let's start the story about Abraham the first time that he needs to do something how our class is starting it's not here but I guess you, most of you are familiar with this pasuk. and let's see what the Ibn Ezra have to say about it so I'm in source number three Hashem Tziva Abraham. oh sorry 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 I skipped a very important thing I'm sorry Okay, I'm going back to this number two. We know that Hashem said to Abraham, Lech lecha mi moladatcha, meartzcha mi beta vich, right? And we all the time saying, Abraham, what was so great about it? That Hashem told him to do something, and what he's doing? He's doing it. Even leaving his family, even leaving everything behind, and he right away doing it. But, if we we'll take a look at this number two, try to look at the bolt, and tell me, I, I would like, if, if you want to tell me, What is weird from the story that we know? We know that Hashem told Abraham, you need to go to Canaan. Nachan? Nachan? So we see that Abraham maybe war, was already in, on his way to Canaan. It wasn't because Hashem told it. I'm reading again Pasuk, uh, Pasuk Lamed Aleph. Okay? It says as follows, Vayikach terach et Abraham bno. ואת לוט בן הרן בן בנו, ואת שרי כלתו אשת אברהם בנו, ויצאו איתה מאור כסדים, going where? ללכת ארצה כנען. What happened on the way? ויבואו את חרן וישבו שם. If you want, you can see on the map on this side, I took for you the journey, so you, just to see where they go. So in the, in the, in the circle you have אור כסדים, okay? The square is Haran, and the triangle is Eretz Yisrael. So we know that Terach was on his way to Eretz Yisrael, sorry? Sorry, rectangle, what is it, triangle? Okay. I, need to, I need to go back to learn shape. Okay. Better? Yofi. This is how we will learn. So we're having, in circle, we're having Uruk Asim, in the square, we're having Haran, and the rectangle, we're having Eretz Yisrael. Better? Metsuyan. Now we're having two options. You see by the arrow, they have two options how to get, how to do their way, but it doesn't matter. This is the journey that they did. So we see that Terach did it basically before Hashem even spoke to Abraham. In the end, we, we, see, we see that it already happened. So this is even make the question greater because we try to say, Abraham, what's so special about Abraham that he heard Hashem saying to him to leave everything that he knows And he went. And here was it, his father took him with the whole family. And anyway, they were on the way there. So what's special about what he did? And how we can say that he is the first soul and giving him so many carrots. Maybe it's me. We need to figure out what's going on. Nahon. True. That's true. And we'll speak about it later why he stopped on Haran. But the idea that in, in, in their mind, we'll, we'll see it in a few more sources, in the, his mind, he was on his way to Canaan. By the way, when Hashem saying to Avram, and again, we'll see it later on, that Hashem is not telling him to go to Canaan. What is telling him? He doesn't know where he's going. Eventually, we know that he needs to reach to Canaan. But we see that the whole family maybe want to immigrate to Canaan. 
they stop in Haran, we'll see in a minute maybe why, but but we said this is not that Avraham left all Kasdim because Hashem told him. The whole family was a journey, maybe the Yimig or the whole family together. Okay. So how did Ibn Ezra, did Ibn Ezra trying to answer this question, that the great wisdom, it's a good one. This is why I changed topics, because this is what's really, okay. And let's see what he says. Hashem tiba la Avraham, v'odenu be'ur kasdim, sheyazov arzo u'mekor meladeto gam be'it ha'aviv. V'atam, sheyada Hashem, sheterach achar sheyetze lelechet el eretz k'nan, yeshev v'charan. So this is basically what you said. The Ibn Ezra said that Hashem told Avraham that he needs to go to that land when they were in Ur, before they left Ur Kasdim. Why Hashem told him then, Lech lecha v'artzecha v'mladetcha? Hashem knew the Terach want to go, but Hashem also knew the Terach will stop where? In Haran. And therefore, he got the command when they were in Ur Kasdim, and he completed the journey later on after Haran died. He continued and said, V'terach lo met ad achar shishim shana sh'yatza Avraham mibet aviv v'charan, so basically what the Ibn Ezra said, we don't have a conflict. Hashem said to Avram when they were in Ur Kasdim, you should leave your homeland. It happened, Hashem also knew that Terach will want to leave Ur Kasdim, but he knew that he wouldn't complete his journey to Eretz Kinan. And therefore he said, he got the command, Avram went when he knew in his mind that he needs to reach to Kinan, and he knew that he having to stop on the way which is a nice answer, but there is a problem. Because we know that when the way that the Torah is written, there is no word that's written in, in a, every word that's written in a specific way. No problem. Every word that's written in a specific way, there is a reason why it's written that way. Why it's in past time or in present time, or why a singular person doing, there is a reason why Hashem decided to choose this verb and not this verb. And let's go back to the Pasuk, Pasuk Lamedalef again, in source number two. And let's say, let's see again, Vaikach Terach et Avraham Beno. What is Vaikach? Right, he took him. Meaning, if someone taking me, it means that I did it out of my free will. That's a good question. Maybe somebody offered to me and I agreed to go. But when this Vayikach, it means that Terach was the person that organized the, the, this trip. And we'll see that this is the, what the Ramban said. The Ramban actually using, like he's saying, I heard what the Ibn Ezra said. I heard what Rashi said. I don't agree with them. And he said as follows. Haya Avram, ikara nesiyah mi bet aviv, bemitzvat Elohim. What we're trying to say all the time. That why Abraham left Ukastin or left his homeland because Hashem told him so. And how can it be that Terach Aviv Birzon of Sholachimu Kakatu Vaikach Terach at Avram Bnu Yoreki Avram Achare Aviv Uve at Sato Yatame Ukazim Lalechet Arzakna. Meaning, Aramban said, I see this verb Vaikach and I cannot ignore it. I can't, I can't say. That Hashem commanded him, and therefore he knew. So he did see it. He did say, uh, "Fine." Terach went, and Abraham went with him. It wouldn't say that Terach took them. The Terach organized the trip. If Abraham had in mind that he needs to do it as well, the Torah would choose different verbs. And therefore, the Ramban said it cannot be, and we probably need to find a diff. We we have to find a different answer. How can it be, again, and I, sorry that I'm emphasizing this question because it bothered me. This is what led me to write this shoe. Because this is, this is a big question. I think that from a very young age, and I'm sure that all of you, including myself, we know where Adam speaks, Shavu Aliyot, right? Abraham was the first to lay, Lech Lecha. He left everything behind. Then he came. But this is not how it, it, he came even with his father, with him, on this journey. So this is, so this is a question that we need to speak about. And this is when we, um, I found this really, really um, interesting article of Rabbi David Zvi Hoffman. And he says as follows, I'm sorry that I couldn't translate it. So I will translate it wh while I'm speaking. Teur kavanato shel terach, lealot leret knan, eineno soteret ochet psukenu, bo tove Hashem ha'avram lacet lemasa ze, sheken lo ba'a tviya zo, ela leachar shekvar echli terach leishtakea becharan. 
So Rabbi David Zviyofman says as follows. He said, nobody telling us in the Torah that this command was in Augustine. We assuming it because we know that this is where the family came from. But he said, there is no conflict. Terach really took the family. They want to immigrate from Urkazim to Eretz Kanan. Mm -hmm. They reached to Haran. We'll see in a minute. They decided to, to be in Haran in the end. Hashem calling to Avram where? In Haran. Who said that he called him in Urkazim? The family decided to sit in Haran. Everybody are there. They were there enough time, because if you remember when we, we were the, the Ibn Ezra, I said that they were there for 60 more years. So they were a good amount of time in Haran. So it became his homeland. And therefore, now when he said to him, Lech lecha, mimuladetcha, umeartcha, umibetavicha, it makes sense. By the way, Avram still don't know that Haaretz Asher Areka is a Knan, the Eretz she Terach wanted to go to. We don't know it yet, right? But basically, this is how Rav David Hoffman solving this, this question about um, how can it be that Terach took him and still we are uh, praising Avram so much for living. He really left his hometown because he was in Haran for so many years. Maybe he was, uh, was raised there and, and etc. So, do we know that Terach um, actually wanted to get to Canaan? Yeah, it says it the pasuk. It says oh, in pasuk lameda. No, that's fine. It's good that you're asking. Where? It says lalechet arts aknan, and then it says vayavav at charan vayishvushan. This is why I put for you the map, so you will see that the journey it makes sense. I don't know why they couldn't cross this way. Maybe it was that it's dangerous. It's avatot arav. No, it's uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's not a it's green. Ah, the, no, the and water rivers. Ah, why they, I'm saying there's water. They need to follow the river. No, oh, maybe, maybe so that, that's a good idea. Right, right, right. You're right. Yeah. Yes. Right. True. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Also, we know that. We know that Abraham left Haran when he was 75. So we know, so if he, they were there for 60 years, he was only 15. So you can say that he was there for, and now you ask me, so how he had a wife? So she, he was there for 60 years. They were sitting in right. Haran. Right. After, after he, he, he waited right. until right. Terach would die. So maybe the English right. translation is not good enough. The English says that Abraham left. So the English translation, so, so, um, so um, this is not what it's, that, so from my understanding, the way I understand the Hebrew is that the Terach lo met, Ah, so they're saying like, so he left right away. I understand what you're saying. I understand how you see it in this way. I accept what you're saying, but if we're taking it this way or another way, maybe he waited 60 years or uh, Terach was there for another 60 years. Anyway, they said that Abraham was living there enough time to consider this place as a homeland. Is that it? So maybe he reached a... So? If that's the real reason. He left with his family and his father took them. Mm -hmm. But the command to, to leave me better vicha, that was the real... Oh, so you're saying... Was... So you want to say something different. I like it. You're saying like, even like, for sure he was alive. So it's maybe more difficult. He needs to leave his father. I accept. I accept. Thank you. This is why I, I accept, this is why I love about learning Torah, because whoever brings something to the table, we can write and we can learn from it. This is what's interesting with um, English translation, because 
in Hebrew, you can understand things in different, like, and when you have it in English, it's it's not all the time allows you to read the mm -hmm. things in more ways, but I, I totally take what you're saying. I think, I, I, I think it's even better than my explanation. I'm taking your explanation. Okay, good. So, um, so we answer, we, so we gave a few, uh, we gave a few directions of, of the questions. How come Terach took him when Hashem gave him the command? But it's still not answering our questions. Who is this Avraham? So far, we have a nice uh, story of this family, how they went to immigrate, who was in the family, mem who are the family members, which is great. But it's still not telling us anything about who is this guy Avraham. Mm. And Chazal had a, a difficult time with it. We're having such a great person. So how can it be that we don't have anything about him? Therefore, we have lots of midrashim about Avra, who is Avraham. I'm sure that the midrash that I will bring today, I guess that you know this midrash this way or another. But I think that this is showing us a bit some of the characteristics that we want to relate to Avraham without them written in the psukim. So in Bereshit Rabbah, uh, which is a midrash on Sefer Bereshit. We having you having the English on the next page. If you want to follow the English, I will read the Hebrew. Amar Rabbi Chia ben Bno shel Rav Ada, Terach oved pesilim aya. Pa'am achat yatsa lemakom esuyam vooshiv et Avraham kemocher bimkomo. So we saying that Terach, it's not just that he worship idols, idol, idol. Okay, to that. He even was, he was selling um, statues to worship them. He was really, like, he was really deep into it. And one day, he couldn't be in the store, I don't know, and he put Avram to be in charge in the store. And what happened? So Abraham had this trick. What he used to do, a person came to the store. He was using to ask the he asked the person, "How old are you?" The person said, "I'm 60 years." It doesn't matter. And he said, "Shame! It's, it's, it's embarrassing. You are so old, and you want to worship something that my father did yesterday." That's and that person was really embarrassed, so he didn't buy anything. And he went out. פעם אחת, באה אישה אחת והביאה בידה כערת סולת. אמרה לו, הנה לך, הקרב לפני הפסילים. So this is something that we need to understand also, you can see it in, in, in the east, that there are temples, you don't have to have the statue in your home, you can come to the temple, and you can sacrifice, there is lots of gods, and you can decide who you want to offer. So this lady, she didn't want to buy anything, she just wanted to give an offering, okay? So she asking Avram, please take my offering and give to the gods, give to the, the those that. Come Avram, natala patish beyado, shavar et kol apsalim, ve natala patish beyada gadol shabayim. Okay, what he's doing is taking a hammer, he breaking all the statues in the store, and he putting the hammer in the hand of the of the biggest statues there. Kasher ba Aviv amar lo mi asalim kach. His father came home and was really upset. What happened here? Amar lo. I'm going to tell you the truth. So there was this woman came with, with offering and she told me to give it to the gods. And I put it in front of them. So he's saying to his father, I'll tell you the truth. What happened here, you, you wouldn't believe it. A woman came with an offering, and then I put it in the middle so the gods can eat. Then they started to fight. Who will eat first from this offering? So the 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 biggest one, as you can see here, took this hammer. He broke them all, and he and he used the offering. I'm not a, I'm not fool. Why are you saying nonsense? They know like who sacrificed, they don't know anything. You're saying yourself that they don't know any like this is this is nothing, this is stone. 
So how you can worship them? He's trying to teach his father a lesson. Now, why Chazal brought us this Midrash? I guess to show us a few things. A, to show us that Abraham was really devoted in Hashem from a very young age. Second, to show that he was a very wise person. And third, to support the fact that we will learn later on that Abraham and Sarah, there is this Midrash that Abraham megayeret ha'anashim, but Sarah megayeret ha'anashim. So each of them have this job of making people close to Hashem. So this Midrash really supporting this idea that Avraham had something that he has really believed. He have his way. He believed in Hashem. He's trying to spread the word of we have Hashem. Ephad is also a very wise person. Do we have something like that right now in the Torah? No. But Chazal, as I said, want to spread some light on his characteristics and therefore they put this, uh, this Midrash. <laughs> Um, I would say it's a figure of speech. I don't know why they emphasize. I'll tell you the truth. You know what? Maybe because we having midata emit, and he wants basically to show his father this is not a, this is not truth. Like I'll tell, like you think that this is this is the truth. This is who you win. I'm assuming. I don't know. I don't have the answer. Mm -hmm. This is what I think. Mm -hmm. Um, before we read the, the next Midrash, basically it's continued, it's in the same Midrash Rabbah. Um, another fascinating uh, fact is that, you know, that archaeologists uh, found in the area of Iraq, um, they found different um, things that supporting the fact that Avram was really coming from Mokasdim, based on the Midrash, the Midrash that we're going to read. In the time of Avram and also later on, there was um, a very, um, I would say, uh, not traumatic, a very, I don't have the word in English. People were sacrificing other people as an offering. And the way to sacrifice those people was to burn them in ovens. So uh, archaeological found in the area of Iraq, what we say Wokos Dim is today, they found those big, like uh, the big ovens that it's for sure not for cooking and probably was with bones and everything, basically showing that this was the, this is the way that they worship their gods. And the next, why it's so interesting, because the next Midrash, that I'm sure that you know that Abraham was, uh, that they, mm -hmm. they stand into the fire pit mm -hmm. and Hazal basically use, um, use an idea of offering human beings and then in that area where we think that Ulkas Dim is, we have the support, we have the evidence that those things actually happened back then. And Chazal wasn't living in the time that archaeology was so like, uh, you know. So this is really interesting and nice to, to see how our Midrashim and Chazal and Atorah Shebaalpeh is also uh, going hand by hand with reality. This is really... <laughs> It makes, yeah. it makes sense. Uh, ah, right. True, true. This is why maybe Avram didn't question it so much because this was something that was going on in the world, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see the next one. Um, as I said, um, I'm, um, it's in the same, it is the same midrash. Um, and again, you have the English to follow. So we have Netalo Umasarol and Nimrod. So his father wants to agitate him. You lying to me. You're doing for me problems in my store. I want to educate you. What I will do, I'll take you to the king. And the king will decide what to do with you. Okay? He gave, he brought him to the king that his name was Nimrod. Meaning, Nimrod trying to make Abraham to stop with this nonsense of believing in one God and he's trying to convince him to worship <laughs> other gods so he said like work to the fire so Abraham said no maybe i should work to the water because the water have the ability um right then he said no problem just stop with the nonsense of believing in one god so worship the water 
אמר לו אברהם, אמר לו, אם כך אעבוד לענן שנושא את המים, maybe I should worship the clouds, because the clouds bringing the water to the world. אמר לו, אעבוד לענן, no problem, worship the clouds. אמר לו, אם כך אעבוד לרוח שמפזר את העננים, maybe I should worship the wind, because the wind is the one that bringing the clouds. עבוד לרוח, he is like, he says, don't have any more pace, fine, worship the wind. take whatever you want. אמר לו, ונעבוד לבן אדם שסובל ארוחות? basically he having here like a debate, of course, again, I don't know if it happened in reality or no, but if we're having here this midrash when Abraham trying to chutzpah, smart, I don't know, call it whatever you want, and he is basically trying to, uh, to show that all this um, system of worshiping different things in nature is not working, because every time you have someone else that helping the other things to exist. So you can't say that this is a, God, a separate God. In the end, like you're speaking too much. Nimrod said, I believe in, in the fire. Therefore, what I will do, I'm going to, uh, to put you in fire. If you believe in that God, and I believe in God of fire, I'll put you in the fire. And if your God is really exists, what will happen? He will save you. And as you know, probably, Hashem saved him according to this Midrash. By the way, and I did put it here because I think it's very interesting. And again, it's supporting. Um, usually when we're teaching kids the story, we're not saying the end of the story. But it's an interesting because it's again supporting the fact that Avraham was trying to convince other people to go to uh, to join him. Hayasham Haran, remember Haran? Who is Haran? At, uh, and, right, this is his uncle, right? Hayasham Haran. So Haran was standing there, okay? Amar, im yenatzeach Avram, omar ani shel Avram. So Haran saying, maybe Avraham has something in his words. Maybe, maybe you have, a, I need to listen to him. If he's going to really, uh, uh, to, to, to survive this, this fire, I'm going with him. And if Avram will die, so I'm, I'm with Nimrod. That's what we said. Nimrod asking Haran, who are you going with? אמר להם של אברהם. So Avram was able according to this, and in the end Haran was put in the fire pit and he died, and this is why it's explaining us why maybe Terach took lot wisdom. Right. Disappear. We know that he was born, and then like he disappeared from the Pesukim. So this Midrash giving us two answers. First of all, it's telling us where, where Haran went. Second of all, it's maybe explained to us why Abraham later on felt so much responsibility for Lot. Because yes. we know later on uh -huh. that Lot is going with them. And Lot, and, and they have their, their arguments and they decided to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. And then he's trying to save him and his family. Like this connection between them, it's not just, um, we see it's, there is something in it. So maybe Abraham, according to this Midrash, felt responsibility. Haran, his father, supported me. And, and, and now he, he lost his father. And therefore also this maybe explained to us why Terach, why he didn't took other nephews. I'm sure there was more, but he took Lot. So maybe it's giving us a bit of explanation how Lot became so involved with, with, this, uh, with this branch of the family. So again, we're having this Midrash, again, to support what we just said about how Abraham is very detriment of his believing in Hashem. But still, we don't have the answer. Why the Torah? Why Hashem didn't decide to tell us all those great things? Why Hashem didn't, in the same way that he says, Why it's not saying us, and Abraham, I don't know, was devoted in Hashem in all his ways. I don't know, like two sentences that I will understand this choice. And again, Rav David Zvi Hoffman trying to answer this question. And he said as follows. 
היו ידועים לדור מקבלי התורה במידה רבה כל כך <coughs> עד שלא היה כל צורך להכיר אותם להם על ידי תיאורים של ימי נערותיו וזכויותיו אומר רבי דוד צבי אופן הוא מציע He is offering us um, one solution We'll see you can decide if you like it or not He said the name Avraham It was such a known name We said he Avamon Goyim He was such a great name that you didn't need to explain who is this person We have people that we know that they are so great They did so much They are they, uh, And everybody knows them You don't need to explain When I'm saying to you, Moshe, you know who Moshe is. I don't need to explain to you who he is. So he said, on the same way, that the generation that went to Egypt and then like went out and got the Torah eventually, you said to them, Avraham, they knew who you speak about. And therefore, because they got the Torah first, we got it a bit like in generation to come, but because they got the Torah, he didn't need to explain to them who is this person. Everybody knows who Avraham is. But he's giving us another explanation in case that you don't like this one. And he said as follows. Mm-hmm. Meaning, actions speaks louder than words. Can. a guidebook. What are the things to be a great person? How it's looked like? And let's see what the Maharal said, and I'm wondering if this is what you refer to, and if not, so we'll just add another layer. אבל עיקר הבחירה שבחר השם יתברך באברהם לא הייתה בחירה פרטית רק שבחר בו וזרו אחריו, אלא בחירה כללית. What is saying? Basically saying Abraham weren't chosen because he is Avraham. Avraham was chosen because of what will come after him. I will try to explain. When Hashem chose Noach, he chose this guy to a specific mission because his qualities. He was go- so he was chosen to survive the, the, the Mabul to be able to continue your meant because he was a good person. Because it was devoted in the ship. Avraham weren't chosen from that reason because he was a great guy or because he was devoted to Hashem. Hashem chose him. Like I'm picking someone. He picked him to, uh, to, to spread the word. But not because he was a tzaddik, not because he was detriment in Hashem. And I'm reading the next one in bold, okay? Ki ha'efresh, stikha lola, no, stikha. What he's saying basically, if I'm choosing someone because he's righteous, the moment that he stopped to be righteous, what will happen? So the covenant is done. If I'm choosing someone because he's a great person, then something happened and he is going off the way. Do I... I'm breaking my relationship with this person. If I want to to take something that may be closer to our word, if I'll take my children, they know that I love them no matter what. It doesn't matter what they're doing. Nobody can break our connection. So in the same way, Hashem saying, I chose Abraham not because something that he did, not because one of his qualities. I chose him because I have a belief, I have a general belief in humanity. 
And I'm choosing to create a covenant between the generation that will come out of this guy. And I choose him to spread my word. And I'm choosing to create this covenant to know that it cannot break because I'm not choosing him by a specific characteristic. I'm choosing him because I chose him. It's exactly how he continues. And he said, this is why Hashem didn't mention how much of Ram is a righteous person. So after he left, this is if he would say, this is why I'm choosing Avraham. So why Hashem didn't say to us anything? Because if he would say to him, Lech lecha ma'artacha amradatcha. And then Abraham would do that. And then Hashem would say, I choose you. So, so why? Because he said that he will do it. This is why he chose him. And Hashem wants to create here a different kind of connection. And this is what he says. Ki ha'efresh asher yesh min Yisrael ha'umot, ki Hashem itbarach bachar ba'Yisrael ba'etem, ve'lo b'shvil ma'asem ha'tovim. שלא לומר דווקא כשהם עושים רצונו של השם יתברך, אז בחר בהם. So, המהרה taking it another step to עם ישראל. Why Hashem chose עם ישראל? Because it chose us. Because, exactly, because. And it's nothing to do with their actions. It's the same connection. This is why I took children and parents, because it's the same connection. I have a child, I love him no matter what. And it doesn't matter what he will do, I'll be there for him. It's true that we sang in Parashat Vayayim Shema, in case that we're not listening to Hashem, Hashem will kick us out of the land, there will be consequences, but it never said, and I will abandon. It never said, and I'm breaking our covenant. It never said, and I'm not looking after you. We have lots of psukim that saying about the fact that Hashem is always with us. We having this um, even when you don't know it, I'm there with you. There is this famous story about I'm sure that you know it about this guy that have difficult life. No, I will ruin it. I will think how to say it, and then I'll say it for the not ruin to the one that don't know the story. I'll get it in a sec. But the idea, basically, if you want to answer why Hashem didn't say anything about him, because he chose him, because he chose him. It's like. Uh, um, we sang every morning and we sang you believe in me you believe in me Hashem have a belief in us and Hashem believes that this guy Abraham will know what to do without without telling us what his what uh, uh, character thank you he have or not so this is the first uh, 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 I try to answer the first question why Avram. Why? There is no a good one. He chose him because he chose him. Later on, we saw that that was a good choice. Sure, this is it. Right, that's true. Well, when you when you are in the truth, you say this is who you are, you grow into it, and then you have to be very careful because when you choose someone, they also become, right? They, they then believe it, right? Meaning there's a, in sort of, you know. Right. True. But I think that on the positive way, when you have a faith in someone, exactly. yeah. as okay. so, so he grow into it. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's, so this is why we need to be so careful with our words. I'm also think all the time about my mm -hmm. students, how careful we need to be with our words when you're saying something. And, and and they get what you said, and then they can walk. I can tell you that I have a story in my class that I said something, and I didn't even I didn't even realize how seriously she took what I said. And then one day she came to me and said, like, but you said so-and-so. And I said, hey, I really don't remember even that I said that. But she was going with the sentence, mm -hmm. and it's really influenced. No, don't worry, we figure it out. She believe in herself now. <laughs> but the idea is how much we need to be careful with our words. And 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 I totally agree. Maybe this is why Avra, maybe this can teach us something about life. When we have faith in someone, when we're showing someone that we trust him, when we know when we show it, I think I can you can do it. Without knowing you, 
it may be giving the ability to that person to grow. There is a very famous uh, statement of Rav Karlibach that every child needs one adult to believe in him. Maybe this, maybe this is this is where it came from. Hashem had this believing of Abraham, but again, I do want you to have in mind that it became Abraham, but basically, maybe it could be someone else. That Hashem will have the same faith, and He will grow to be this person again. Okay. I think there's something really profound in this idea that He's sort of the everyman. I know I've heard that this, there's this idea that originally humanity understood that there was one God, and we lost this idea over time. So the fact that it took someone very ordinary to reawaken what's in all of us that was lost, not something new that was introduced, but something to, that was always there, just mm -hmm. that's in everybody. Sure, sure. And, and this is will be one of our um, bottom lines that we'll take with us. Okay. So we got our answer. I think I got an answer, and I hope that you also got your answer about why is Abraham. And now we need to um, to go briefly about uh, why Eretz Canaan. So um, maybe I will skip. Um, I will do it because I don't. I want to be um, on the times. Okay, let's. I'll, I'll try to speak uh, um, fast. Okay. So Lama Eretz Israel. So we're going to the beginning. So we know why Abraham, but why Eretz Israel? As we said, it's not that easy to live here. It's hot and and other stuff. So even though I have to tell you, I'm not missing shuffling snow in Canada. I don't know. So, Ve'elach Avraham kasher didar al Hashem. I'm reading in Bereshit Yud Bet. Ve'elach itolod Avraham ben chamesh shenim ve'shivim shena betzdom echad. So he said Avraham was 75 when he left Haran. When Hashem told him you should leave, he wasn't a young guy. He was 75 years old. And again, we see Ve'elach itolot. Again, we see this lot coming with him all the time. This is why it was so important for me to give you the end of the previous midrash. וכך אברהם את שרה אשתו ואת לוט בן אחי ואת כל רכושם אשר רכשו ואת הנפש אשר עשו בחרן ויצאו ללכת ארצה כנען ויבואו ארצה כנען. So now Abraham, he fulfill Hashem's word, he's starting to go and eventually he reaching to כנען, he basically fulfilling his father mission that went out um, from חרן to ארץ ישראל. Now I want you to take a look, I put for you in the box, the same psukim that's speaking about how Terach left Ur Kasim. And let's see um, what, uh, where is the common thing and where are the different When Terach left, he says it's called, Vaikach Terach et Avram Bno, vet Lot Benaran Ben Bno, vet Sarai Kalato Eshet Avram, vetu ita me Ur Kasim, lelech et Arza Knan, vayavo ad Haran. And if I'm reading again Pasuk Hay, it's, it's look very similar. Vaikach Avram et Sarai Ishto, vet Lot Benachi, vet Kolo Hushama Shalachashu, Etc. Etc. Now, what is the difference? Okay, so this is like um, slaves or 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 maids that they have there and and proper and uh, property. Correct. What else? Sorry. No, okay. so this this is what what she said. But also, if you'll take a look. Sorry? So it's it's all the same idea, that all the, the property, that's correct. But we having in the end, you see that in Pasuk Hay, when it speaks about Abraham, they're reaching the goal, they're arriving to Knan. And in Terach, it says, So this, they, they're stopping their journey in the middle. But there is another thing. With Abraham, we have the reason. In Pasuk Dalad, it says, so why Abraham is going to Knan? Because Hashem told him. Why Terach left to Knan? Because he wanted to. So I'll tell you how to just so, so you have it. Uh, two options why he went to Knan. To Knan. First of all, Knan was now as the golden the golden land, okay, and people want to go there because it was considered as a very good land. Why not? We should go there. Um, so that was uh, one explanation. And the second explanation um, is as follows. Shem, remember, Noach, Shem, Ham, and Yefet are his sons. Terach was descendants of Shem. And by a blessing that Noach gave to his children, um, the 
kids of Shem will conquer the, the land of the kids of Ham. The son of Ham, his name was Knan. So basically, Terach wants to fulfill this blessing and he wants to conquer the land Knan from like his relatives. Because according to the blessing that they got from their uh, from Noah, he needs to sit in this land. It was too complicated or we follow? Okay, good. Can, can, can. Slicha, the No, the no, right. The, the dynasty is, as this is the way it is. Knan, he is the son of, of uh, his descendants of Ham, and it's written in the Psuki. But, and there is the blessing there that, that the sons of Shem will conquer. Uh, there is, this is says in the Psukim. But the idea that Terach went to fulfill this mission, it's a Midrash. Beseda? Metsuyan. Yofi. So, if we're saying, and this is even uh, uh, make our question more complicated. If we're saying that Knan, if we'll take the first idea, that Knan was the golden, like everybody wants to go there. It's such a great place. And we know that Vaikach Terach Terach took Avraham already to Knan. So I guess that Avraham heard in his home, Knan is the best place to live. Knan is the great place to go. We should go to Knan. So when Hashem telling him, and he realized that he arriving to Knan, probably was very happy. It wasn't such a difficult mission. Fine, he needs to leave his father. But he known that Knan, this is like the best place in the world. So he's probably very happy to go there, even that he needs to leave everything behind. No, it says, no. It's a good question. <laughs> it's a good question. Um, one thing I would say that if Hashem talked to him, so he knew how to lead himself, like on the way, he told him, go right, go left, go straight. Um, it's a good question. I don't have an answer. Does it mean that he no natural water source in Canaan? There are no rivers. Look at if you look at what there is in Haran, you've got the uh, Pratan for Zeto there. Right. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Why he wants to go to Why Tia wants to go to Knan? Knan. You, you, you know? I mean, we know the topography. You just land with Why were there so many different nations in Canaan? Right. Why right. Right. When the Jews came back. Everybody wanted a piece of the land because it was considered a very prestigious land even then. What well, made it prestigious? To I don't know. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Right, but this has happened well, later on in history. Which, uh, so later on in history, we know that it was a very important place because you can took like 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 sheaves and pools, like it was a very yes. good place to like even when Plishtim are here in the yeah. Navi time, it's a very good place to see that. Why Tuck wants to go there? So if we don't like the idea that Canaan was the best place to live, so maybe you really want to conquer the land, like yeah. as promised. Uh -huh. Okay, so we can take this way or or another way. So what's so special about the land of Israel? And as you said, it doesn't look so special. <laughs> so it's like so, so again. Yeah. So first of all, so. So Rav Hoffman said as follows: In the same way that Hashem didn't choose Abraham because of his character, He didn't choose the land because of the benefit you can have from it. In the same way, this is why the first Nisayon, the first time. Hashem trying Avraham is water is a famine. Famine. He got into the promised land and then he needs to he needs mm -hmm. to go to Egypt because they have nothing to eat. Mm -hmm. So and this is what I put in words. Why this land was was chosen by Hashem? Mishum shei mesugelat lekadem et hitalutam hamusarit. Meaning this land, you're joking because of the news. But but the idea is we'll try, we'll try to make something good out of this lesson. How how we are so grateful to be here, even with everything that happened. 
משום שהיא מסגלת, מסוגלת לקדם את התעלותם המוסרית של היושבים בה. מינינג, השם צ'וז דה לנד אוף ישראל נוט בקוז איטס אוגרייט פלייס. בקוז ווין דה רייט פיפל סיט און דאט לנד, דיס לנד ביקאם פרוטפול. נאו, there is like it's very easy to look at a history knowing that there was nothing here and when the aliyot started and maybe when we'll get to Tu Bishvat I have a whole thing to show you about it how the, it was really nothing here and people tried to do agriculture in, in this area and, and, and the land didn't, didn't help them to, to get anything out of it and then once the Jews came back it became a very fruitful like everything became great And we see I every day when I'm going from Khana to Zikhon, I have a beautiful, I, I, really, it's, it's a hard one to see, I learned. Not Tel Aviv is the building, but like mm-hmm. to see that the nature, it's re- like, it's, it's great. And this is exactly the idea. And maybe we can see Hashem chose Abraham because he chose Abraham. And he chose Israel because he chose Israel. And the combination of the right people on the right land that was choosing by Hashem, can create together something very significant to the world. Didn't you ask yourself all the time, how come we're such a small land, such a small nation, and it's looked like there is no news in the world, but what's going on in Israel? And what's going on with the Jews? And there is something with this combination of us here, despite what's going on, that sometimes I'm really waking up in the morning and I'm asking what? And I'm thinking about the future of my children here. And on the other hand, I'm so grateful that Hashem have this belief in me as part of this nation. And knowing that I'm here because Hashem said so, and knowing the combination between me here in this land, despite everything, it create great things in the world. And Harab Mordechai Boyer said as follow. Ayul Avram, I will read maybe just the, the, the one in both. Ayul Avram, You have two reasons why to go to Israel. One, So he wants to fulfill his father's wish to go to Knan. Um, or that he wants to fulfill Hashem's command. So Abraham had his reasons why to go. But he decided to go. Why? Because Hashem said so. And because he had the right to Uh, the right motive to do it so it happened to be that he, he was the great choice to start so many nations out of him and I will finish um, I'm wondering about Rav Kook, maybe I won't read it but I will just say that Rav Kook saying exactly what we spoke now about the fact that Israel it's not something mater- uh, material it's not a land, it's not something f- f- even though we're living in a land and we can feel it, but he said no it's something spiritual The land of Israel, it's not a place that I need to leave it. It's not a, a, a place for the, Jew, for the Jewish people. It's more than that. Am Israel and Eret Israel, the combination between them creates something special. And people, and, and we can say it through history, it's something that we cannot avoid. And I will finish um, what the Sfat Emet said, and with that we'll finish and we'll come to a conclusion. The Sfat Temet says as follows. Ramban Iksha, remember the Ramban that we started with? Kereemar lech lecha, bli shenizkar mekodem chibato. I'm going back to the beginning. The Sfat Temet said, the Ramban find it difficult that Hashem chose Avraham without explaining why Avraham. Ubazor HaKadosh nira, ki ze atzmo ha-shevach. They said, the Zohar said, that this is why we're praising Avraham. Why? ששמע זה המאמר לך לך, and this is Daniel what you, uh, uh, I think, refer to, שנאמר, מהשם יתברך לכל האנשים תמיד. השם is calling to all the people always. But what was unique about Abraham? He listened. He heard. He decided to act. And this is why he said, This is why he chose Avram. Mm-hmm. Maybe if it was a random other guy that was actually trying to pay attention, maybe it was this guy. 
But what was special about Abraham, that he was the only one, that the idea, the concept of Hashem in the world was there. Noah was believing in Hashem, and Hashem revealed himself to him. So the concept was there. Abraham was the first one to listen and to, to act mm -hmm. upon this idea. So what we can take from from uh from this show wow 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 i'm really late so what we can what we can take from this show so first of all choosing in avram it's not because of avram it's a general idea that we can relate to our life and say maybe i can i cannot be avram but maybe i can be someone that listening to ask myself what hashem wants to tell me to look about my life to look about to look about i don't know different um different um, uh, powers that I have within me and ask myself what Hashem wants me to do with it. To try to listen what Hashem tried to tell me. Second of all, knowing that Eretz Israel is something spiritual and it creates great things and sometimes it creates really difficult and bad things. But it's something, and the way that we need to look at that land is not as a land. It is a connection to something spiritual and the idea that we have it, that we are here, we can elevate ourselves and we can elevate the country itself. It's not something physics. And the idea is that if so, if we want to listen, we will be able to hear Hashem voice in our word today. So thank you so much uh, for listening. I'm sorry that I took more of the time. <laughs> and we end here just like that. Yes. Thank you so much.